Welcome to the Debut Theatre Company One Act Showcase. The three short plays you're about to see focus on people trying to connect, appropriate to our present reality, and certainly to the theatre world, where actors, directors, writers, the audience, uh, trying to make it work uh, in isolation. In match, two solitary folks reach toward each other through an online dating site. In breakfast special, two strangers' lives intersect unexpectedly in a Long Island diner. And in poor man's paradise, two people who've known each other for a long time, maybe too long, I try to find a new way to get along. Relax and watch. If you like these three, there are other three play clusters in the debut theater showcase series. Uh, just look for the different colored posters. Okay, it's time. Curtain. Yeah. Mark, it's Jeanette. I know it's you. Long time no hear from. I'm sorry. I know I owe you an apology, but there's a reason. Oh, good, good. You know, when you stand someone up, it's good to have a reason. I chickened out, that's all. I actually drove to the diner that day. Got to the parking lot, chickened out. Okay, chickened out, not a capital crime. Apology accepted. Kind of late to apologize, but no matter. Is that it? I just want to talk a little. More talk? Oh, Jeanette, it, we talked already, okay? Six or seven times. Uh, that's good, right? I like talking to you. Listen, they call it a dating site because people actually want to go out on dates. You know, you talk on the phone a couple of times, maybe three, then you meet. I know. I know. You meet because if you don't hit it off, you keep looking. You don't waste time with more talking. How is talking a waste of time? No, no, never mind that. Listen, Mark, I'm desperate. Oh, oh, desperate. Thanks. Not that way. I just mean, of all the guys I talk to on all the sites, you are the only one I think I could tell why I'm stuck the way I am. At least let me tell you why I chickened out. That would be a big step forward for me. Hmm, can I guess? You lied about your age. I did not. Did you lie? Of course not. Look, I was there in the diner. What's to lie? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. You're much fatter than the picture you posted. Is that it? You put your skinny kid sister's picture on the sites? I don't have a skinny kid sister. I posted my own picture. What would give you the idea I was fat? Uh, oh, don't tell me. You? Me? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, and that would matter? To me, no. What about to you? Well, up to a point, no. Aha. Uh -huh. What, aha uh -huh, what? Look, why did you call Jeanette? All right, here it is. I've been on five different dating sites. I know. I recognize your profile, even with all the different monikers. Then you go on them too. Yeah, so? And you still didn't find somebody? I stopped. I stopped looking, okay? You don't have to yell at me. I'm not yell. I'm not yelling. Would you just get to the point? The point is, I always get as far as the diner parking lot. And then I run back home. Because? Because I know the guy's gonna like me, because I am not fat. 
And then he's going to want to do dinner dates or something. And then sooner or later, he's going to want to come to my house and see if he can get me into bed. Okay. Sounds normal. Very contemporary. A bit precipitous, maybe. What's that mean, precipitous? It means in a hurry. In a hurry, you think? Really? Well, for me, I'm a not-in-a-hurry guy. I'm what you might call fastidious. And what does that mean? It means if a thing isn't perfect, well, let's not say perfect. Let, let's say if, if it isn't the right thing for me, the odd-shaped thing that fits right into the odd-shaped me, I can't bring myself to touch it. You're odd-shaped? I'm speaking metaphorically. And you mean touch it metaphorically? No, I mean touch it literally. You didn't tell me any of this before. Well, it's personal. I, I would have told you at the diner. You're not saying you can't do it. I can do it. I, I can do it. You're yelling again. Look, let's get back to you, okay? What, what's this desperate problem? My problem is my house. It's very... What? Small? Not small. Cluttered. Oh, uh, dirty? I did not say dirty. I said cluttered. Now you're yelling. Well, don't call a woman dirty. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Forget dirty. Uh, let, me, let, let me pick the right word. A hoarder. Is that what you are? No. I collect things. That's all. My mother left me this big house full of stuff, and it just sort of went from there. Just kept on piling up all by itself. Okay. Are you, are you there right now? Can I see? Trust me, it's cluttered. I'm sitting in my chair that I sleep in. Don't ask. There's a little trail that you follow to get here. You sleep in a chair? I told you not to ask. Sorry. There's not a guy sleeping in your bed, is there? The last guy in my life walked out five years ago. <laughs> Waited till my back was turned. Oh, unless he's still here. Lost under a pile somewhere. That was a joke. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Sense of humor, good. Where are you? At work? No, I'm at home, at my desk. Is it cluttered? <laughs> One sheet of legal paper and a pencil. Nice sharp point. That's it. I'm fastidious about work, too. What's written on the paper? Nothing. That's my problem, see? I took an online writing class because it was all that I could get last minute. I am one course away from my degree, see? Now I'm stuck. Can't think of, a f of the first word to put down. How long have you been sitting looking at that paper? Six days. Assignment's due tomorrow. All I gotta write is something about my childhood. Should be easy, right? Nothing. Gee, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna use up your time, but Maybe you could just tell me quick, what should I do about my house? Because it's killing my life. Just throw some stuff out. Yeah, but what? Where do I start? The books? You got, what, you got books? Oh, yeah, lots. Old ones. Children's books on up. You mean like uh, uh, where the wild things are? Sure, I've got a first edition. You're kidding! You have a uh, uh, in the night kitchen too, because that that would be rare if it's a true first. Of course, that one. All of Sendak I have. Wow. Well, well, don't throw any of those out. Start somewhere else. Okay. Mm, comic books? No, I can't part with my mother's little Lulus. Uh, how about dinnerware? I got a ton of Melnac. <laughs> I could set a table for 150 people. Don't. Don't tell me the Aztec collection with all the colors, the, the, the green and the yellow and the orange. Yeah, that's Sienna. <laughs> I haven't seen the Sienna since, well, well, since I was a kid. So I shouldn't throw those out. No, don't be crazy. Well, I gotta start somewhere if I'm ever gonna have a man again. Hmm. <laughs> tools, you think? I've got all these hand tools with wooden handles. No, wait. How about toys? I've got a million of those. Oh, okay. I, 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 th I, I think you've got to be leading me on, right? You're playing with me? You, you, you don't really have all those things. Why would I lead you on? 
what what toys gee what toys mm, i've got barbies kens uh, an easy bake oven uh, a zillion hot wheels mm, transformers robots wait robots i bet i have every robot ever made oh and old stuff too Mark's trains, erector sets, etch a sketch. Wait, wait, wait. You don't, by any chance, have a Froggy the Gremlin. Froggy? I've got two of them. They're in the pile with the dolls. I think I know where, uh, but they don't really take up room. I had one. I lost them. Should have never taken him out of the house. He was, he was my favorite toy. He used to talk to me, in my mind, I mean. Never saw him again. I cried. You can buy one on eBay. No, no, no. My, mine was, was an old played with Froggy. He was from another time. He, he can't be replaced. Ah, uh, there you go, yelling again. Sorry, sorry. That day was, it was the day my life changed. That's all. I lost him. Like I lost myself. That's why I'm alone. I live in a bare house. I, I need for every single thing I have to be in my sight at all times so that nothing gets lost. Wow. Seriously? Seriously. There's no doors on my rooms, not even the bathroom. It's good that you live alone. But, but, but I don't want to. I hate it. I, I don't want to be here by myself. I, I'm willing to put up a bathroom door. Oh, boy, look at all the things you didn't tell me all those times on the phone. Yeah. You too. You there? I never realized how all this stuff in my house used to belong to particular folks who maybe loved it. <sighs> and now it's just a great big heap. You love it now. I do have love in me, but not as much as all those folks together. Well, you're just one person. Capacity. You have capacity. Hmm, I've got stuff. But thanks for saying that. I can give you a froggy. We can each have one. Mine had a, a, a missing foot. Uh, I've got one with no foot. I think lots of the old froggies wound up losing a foot. And you would really? I would. If I say it, I do it. Only thing, you can't come here. That, I'm not ready for. Okay, um, I'll meet you. Yeah? The diner? Yeah, it's good there. They let you sit. They have dinky mugs. Wow, real dinkies? <laughs> You're not kidding me, are you? Would they sell me a few, you think? Uh, never mind, when are we meeting? Now? I'm on my way. Wait inside for me. Just sit there and drink coffee. Just gotta dig out Froggy. Oh, and, oh, oh, oh makeup. I gotta put on some makeup. Look, I, I don't care about makeup. Just come. Oh, 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 and a dress. You don't wanna see me like this. Oh, God, where the hell is everything? Right. No, 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 no. No, you don't. Hey, if you don't show up this time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna what? Find you, that's what. 21 Woody Crest Lane, Corner House. Oh my God, did I just say that? Let's go, <laughs> let's go, before anyone changes his mind. Ah, <sighs> oh, oh, Froggy, speak to me. Okay, Froggy. I'm coming!
that up for you? Oh. If I drink any more, it's gonna come out of my eyes. You uh, want a menu? Uh, not yet. You need this table? No hurry. Someone's supposed to be coming. I know. You want to hear the specials? They stop at 11. 11 specials? No, <laughs> 11 o'clock. That's when we go to lunch specials. Um, it's okay, thanks. I don't want you to waste your voice. No, I, I like to say them. I, I memorize them after all. All right, go ahead. Here. <clears throat> We've got cheese omelet, Western omelet, Greek omelet, garden omelet. That's all the same. My fourth grade class could memorize that. Wait, I mean, give, give me a chance. Uh -uh. We've got hollow French toast, chocolate chip pancakes, Romanian steak and eggs, turkey hash and eggs, um, pastrami and then poached eggs, and um, lox and onion. Um, what about oatmeal? No, no, no oatmeal. You realize every single thing you mentioned is bad for you. Breakfast is supposed to be bad for you, right? Where'd you ever hear that? I, I made it up. I can get you the lunch menu. There's soup on that. that. That's not bad for you. Lentil soup's not bad for you. Okay, then. Would you want some lentil soup? No. Where do I know you from? Why do you look familiar? Uh, maybe from here? I don't come here. Okay, where? Uh, theater? I, I, I do that. I, well, I, I used to. Maybe you go? Uh, lo local theater, I mean. I should go, but I don't. I come home from teaching. I'm exhausted. The weekends, I gotta read. Like what? Like, like school books? Like Ulysses. My book's an ordeal, but worth it. What grade do you teach? I told you, fourth grade. Pay attention. Wow. Bossy. That's right, bossy. Comes with the territory. Wait a minute. You do theater in school sometimes? Yeah, kid musicals. Well, um, well mu musicals for kids. That's where Strawberry Freckle Face, right? About a year ago? Yeah, I was in that. That's it then. My <laughs> class was right there in the front row. We always get put in front because my kids behave. I make them. And you, you were the basketball jock. Guilty. <laughs> no, 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 you sang. You have a beautiful voice. Well, yeah, well, uh, thanks. But you didn't come back. They did Alice in Wonderland for us a couple of months later and no you, just some other guy with no voice. Yeah, I got fired. For what? For punching the director in the face in between acts. I, I have a, a problem with um, being scolded in, in public, especially for changing a, a line that needs to be changed. You punched him? You don't look like the punching type. I, I'm not, really. <laughs> my, my problem is different. Yeah? I, I, I forget who I am sometimes. If my, my character's like a, a cocky sort of jock, I, I start acting that way. I, I kind of go on improvising, gets me in trouble. Yeah, every job has its occupational hazard. Me, I talk broken English sometimes. <laughs> Why? Because half my students do. They come from Bangladesh, Bolivia, everywhere. I've got 37 in one room. The principal keeps loading them in because I'm the only teacher who doesn't say no. Because I've been said no to plenty in my life. You like your job? I love my job. Except for one thing, no men. One male teacher in the whole building and he's- What, gay? Married. And the women too, I'm like the last one who isn't married. Well, I used to love my job too. You shouldn't hit people. That should be a lesson. That was a freak thing. The role before that, I, I was Pinocchio. Very sweet. I started walking like him all the time, you know, like on string. <laughs> move, move!
that's not your date. That guy's too old. Who says it's a date? Well, you're, you're prettied up, aren't you? That's none of your business. Well? I guess not, but it could have been. <laughs> you, you mean you, you don't even know what the guy looks like? If he didn't post a picture, isn't that, shouldn't that be some kind of like tip off? <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. Thank you. Oh, the hat. Right. What's he supposed to be wearing? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a customer. Leave me a check here, please. Okay. One minute. You could save yourself the trouble. He's not coming. How do you know he's not coming? Hmm? How do you know anything? You're a waiter. Day job, if you don't mind. Good. If the guy comes in after I'm gone, you can sing for him. I'm telling you, he's not coming. He's already been and gone. What are you talking about? Like a minute ago. I mean, the guy came into the vestibule, put his face to the glass, looked you over, and made a run for it. You're going out of your way to hurt my self-esteem. No. I'm not pretty enough for a guy to want to meet. Is that what you're trying to get across here? Too pretty. I mean, think about it. A guy who doesn't have much nerve to begin with gets a look at you, he's gonna run. Oh, what bull? No, you deserve more. I mean, someone special should, should not be waiting for some idiot's approval. That That's like a tear in the fabric of the universe. Oh my God, listen to you. You shouldn't be a writer. I am. I, I do. Right. Songs? Little ditties about love? A play, not a ditty. Oh, the dish runs away with the spoon, a diner tale? <laughs> You're a snob, you know that? I am not a snob! All right, what, what kind of play? Well, for kids. It's almost done. Okay, think Beauty and the Beast. Beast is the star, okay? He's happy to be living in just his instincts. You know, like a, a real romantic, you know? And then beauty comes along and she just tames him with, with language. He shrinks almost to nothing. It's a metaphor, see? Like a metaphor for what us teachers do to kids? Not the teachers so much. The culture, TV, computer games. Language is good for them. We're using it right now, aren't we? It's good to a point, but when you ask kids to improv, I mean, look what you get. First graders come up with incredible stuff, very original. By fourth or fifth grade, I mean, everything they do looks like television, all the same. I'm in schools, I know. Oh my God. What? It's true, what you're saying. Yeah. Are we? Doing that with language right now? The grown-up version of it? No. We, we fight. We fight not to do that every day. We do. Do you fight with words? I have to. I'm dyslexic. Ah. Yeah. I memorize. And once I have lines, they're stuck in me forever. That's why I can't let them be trite. Isn't a diner menu trite? Food is in its own category. It's all in how you say it. I'm good with dyslexic kids. Here's the thing. Don't ask them to read aloud. Don't punish them for forgetting their school book. Write down their homework task on a memo sheet and put it in their pocket. I guess those kids wind up loving you. Yeah, they do. Because in my class, they stop being afraid of words. I like what you're trying to do. Your play, I mean. Oh, I'm not trying. I'm doing it. Good. My kids need to see a play like that. Are you going to give it a happy ending? I mean, we can't have the beast shrink to nothing. Almost to nothing, I said. Then he gets revived. By what? Don't say love. Why not? Life's good, right? I mean, there's, there's chocolate chip pancakes.
Why'd you tell me the guy came and left? That was just to put me in my place, right? He did come and leave. How could I not tell you? Could have been some other guy looking in through the glass. I've seen him before. This is the third time a woman sat in this place waiting for that guy to, to like what he sees enough to come in. I think I may have to punch him in the face if he ever shows up again. The third time? Is he a sicko? He's got an ego sickness. That, that's all. Should have told me right away instead of letting me sit here. Well, to be honest, I, I was stalling you. For what? So, um, so I, I could eat with you. Wow. Yeah? Really? Don't you work here? Yeah, but it's the lull before lunch. I mean, I'm allowed to eat. What about woman number one and woman number two? Did you eat with them too? Special, I, I said, but didn't, didn't I say special? Okay, sit with me. Thank God I can get rid of the stupid hat. God. No, 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 I, I like it. Did the other two women wear hats too? <laughs> the other two look silly in them, not you. Yeah? You wanna hear the lunch specials? I got them in here. Soups you got? Listen. Malagatani. Isn't that a good word? More. Ribolita. Artichoke chowder. Biche soise. Ginger miso. Are you coming, Father Gregory? I I've got it set up. I'm coming. I'm just looking for my stall. Oh, I threw it out. The moths got to it. You threw it out? But you mean in the garbage? It was full of holes. Use your other one, the polyester one. Uh, but that one disappeared. Oh, I forgot. We buried Father Gus in that one. My stall we buried him in? Great, no stall. Why not just wear that winter scarf you have in your drawer? A scarf is not a stole. All right, never mind. We don't need one. Now, since you insist on doing this right now. Yes, I insist. I haven't slept the last two nights. Well, me either. And I've got a headache besides. What's with the wall? I won't look at you if you don't want. Today, I feel like having it there. Thanks. Let's get to it. I I've got cooking on the stove. Fine. I'm swamped with work, too. Yeah. Tap, tap, tap. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I broke the seventh commandment. I, I took what wasn't mine. Uh, that again. What did you take this time? The ciborium, the old one. You went into the sacristy? Well, someone's got to. Who's gonna clean down there since Father Gus is gone? All right, all right. As soon as this ankle heals, I'll be going up and down the stairs again. Falling down the stairs again, you mean? Now that's not nice, Maggie. You know, it was the dog's fault I fell down the stairs. Oh, blame Nemo, just cause he got underfoot. He couldn't help it. He was old, the poor little thing. Look, okay, okay, I mean, I, I feel bad enough. I fell on him. Oh, let's not talk about what happened to Nemo. Right. Let's finish up now before my head explodes. I, now, just put the ciborium back where it was. Enough said. By the command of our Lord in heaven, if you truly repent your- Wait, wait, I, I'm not done yet. Something else with the seventh commandment. 
I took the monstrance too. The, the one that broke off the stand. Two things you took? Where are you hiding your loot? In your room somewhere? I pawned them. Okay, Maggie. What's happening? You need money? We need money. What you give me to go to the supermarket, I couldn't feed a parakeet with that. Never mind you and me. Do I eat so much? Why not just tell me you need more money? Because then you'll tell the provincial we're broke. Then he'll say you gotta take in more with the collection basket. Then you'll say, are the old biddies still coming here to sit in the pews? There's only one left who hasn't showed up the past three weeks. And he'll say, then lock the doors and come back to Brooklyn. And then you'll tell me you don't need a housekeeper anymore after I've worked here 35 years, killing myself. Wasn't I good at my job? Well, wasn't I? Easy, easy. This is a confession, right? Yes, Maggie, you were good at your job. Your attitude, well, that's a different story. What do you mean, my attitude? I point this out for your own sake, Maggie. No, that's not true. For my own sake. <laughs> just remember, I've been here as long as you. You were just a skinny boy in a black suit when you first walked in here. And you were a skinny girl with a mop of red hair and no attitude. All right, where did you pawn the church's property? Poor man's paradise, Second Avenue. <sighs> okay. Can we eat for the next week? Two more days, then it's bread and butter. Now you know bread sticks inside me like glue. All right, never mind. not your problem. Look, I forgive you your sins. In the name of the Father. Oh, the hold Son. it, hold your horses, I I'm not done. Maggie, stop, my head is gonna explode. Look, go up to Our Lady of Peace, do your confession there. There is no more Our Lady of Peace. The Coptics are in there now, remember? Oh, right, I forgot. I can't keep up. Look, I, I'm distracted. I am terribly distracted these days. You know why your head hurts? Cause you never dust. Your room is like King Tut's tomb. Your bathroom is, I don't know, beyond cleaning. You know how depressing that is to someone like me? I'm talking about my vocation. The whole thing's getting away from me. See these old knees? They don't bend anymore. How am I gonna be cleaning bathroom tiles? Well, blame Father Gus. He was the slob in the bathroom. You've got a stain on your shirt right now, and I can smell you, too. Even on top of that goulash in there. Hey, that's out of line. I can smell you if you want to go there. I work. I sweat. What do you do besides peck away at that old typewriter in there? I've got news for you, Maggie. Thinking is work. Yeah, yeah. My father used to say that to my mother. Meanwhile, she went six days a week to a housekeeping job, and he sat on the couch with a newspaper, waiting for his supper. Ha! <laughs> Thinking. There were eight priests living here when I started as housekeeper. I had this place gleaming and nobody had a headache every day. I have a headache from eye strain, not from dirt. Stop straining your eyes then. Relax, read a book. Do you hear you? You know, you give me a headache, you cuckoo. Now you apologize. All right, all right, I apologize. Look, Maggie, I am knocking myself to pieces trying to write a book in there that needs to get written. And until it's done... Well, just cut to the ending, why don't you? What's it about? This falling down church here. Which immigrant folks built out of nickels that they squeezed out of their pay? Which at one time had four masses every day, six on Sundays? Which had vigils, processions, novenas, a holy name society, a school, a convent full of nuns. I was there. I cooked for the nuns too, didn't I? Yeah. Do you care about this? Does anybody? No. You know, people used to believe in things. 
I mean, this church, it used to be bursting at the seams. That organ used to blast day and night. Now, the seams are leaking and we got a whole mess in the basement. No organ. You know what year this church was built? The same year that Nietzsche said, God is dead. How's that for irony? I don't give a hoot about irony. Why'd he say that? Because he saw how desolate the world was going to be with no more ideology. Ah, don't use words like ideology. Father Gus used to talk to me in plain English. With him, I'd be back to my cooking already. It means things to believe in. Uh, ideas to, to have a passion for. The guy's telling us we can't make machines and money our religion. We just wither away if we try. And we have withered. The guy was absolutely right. A portable radiator is a machine, right? If we had a little money, we could have one in your room and one in mine. We could both be warm in our beds at night. The wiring. The wiring. I mean, if we burn the whole damn rectory down, we'll be warm, all right. Maggie, listen. I'm trying to tell you something about myself that just revealed itself. I mean, here, I, I finally get around to truly understanding a thing after it's over, when it's too late. Then I think of writing a book, I'm like Nietzsche in reverse. It's not too late. I've got my eye on some other stuff in this sacristy we can pawn. I'll just confess now and, and save you the trouble later. I want to confess something to you, Maggie. I mean, since you've got the wall here already. Well, not to me. I've got goulash on the stove. Forget the damn goulash. Listen, you saw me walk in here fresh out of the seminary 35 years back. You want to know how that happened? If it's one of your sermons, no. I was an altar boy here. I would get a thrill every time I walked into those rooms that, that people never get to see. All that weird stuff not to touch, like in the sacristy, where you aren't supposed to go. The back corridors with their own smell, the belfry with the, the spiral stairs and the, the rope hanging. You know, I'm talking that forbidden kind of thrill that repels you and pulls you in at the same time. Oh, that thrill I understand. Let me tell you what happened one time. Old Brother Joaquin let me pull the bell rope for somebody's funeral. I took hold of it. I mean, it, it disappeared into this, this dark tunnel that it, it sucked the air straight up. You, you could feel it. You could even hear it sighing. Well, guess what? I pulled the rope hard as I could, and the rope pulled me back. I mean, it, it just it yanked me right off my feet into that tunnel. It scared the crap out of me. Well, from somewhere else, way down in the street, I heard a church bell clang. That was it. You know, before that, I, I thought I was going to I don't know, be maybe a prize fighter. I could throw a hell of a punch for my size, believe it or not. And take one too? That's the real trick. My brother was a prize fighter for five minutes. Look, you shouldn't use the confessional to tell me weird stuff. I need to. So you're stuck with it just like I am. Do you know what I've done in my life, Maggie? I've gone toward the exact things that my instincts told me to run from, and vice versa. Now, why? Why did I? Because your head works in reverse. You said it yourself. Right, I did. You know what I actually wanted? A wife, a home. Yes, it's true. You know, in the seminary, I met guys who didn't want a wife, were afraid. Well, not me. You think it didn't happen to me over these years that I fell in love with a woman from afar? I did. But did I go to it? No. Away. Stop telling me private things. It's not priestly. 
well, who am I going to tell then? I mean, it's only the two of us now and that typewriter in there, which I accept is my mortification of the flesh because it's guilt that's giving me a headache. You're mortifying my flesh with it too. Tap, tap, tap. Look, you don't need to feel guilty for falling in love. We all do it once. For a dirty bathroom, you should feel guilty. You too? I never knew that about you. Nothing to know. Ancient history. I took two steps in that direction, caught myself, took a good look at my parents, turned around. I'll do my purgatory after I'm dead, thank you. Okay, fine. Exactly my point. Now here's my guilt. When an old couple look at each other across their supper, they see their years and years of bickering, grumbling, criticizing, resenting. They don't even like each other anymore. Life has battered them. It's common. I know this because I hear about it all the time in the confessional. Or I used to. So, if that's what people are given, they have to live it. Yeah. You know, a poor man's old age sorrow is the sight of his woman breaking down year by year and vice versa. Not me though. I hid from that, get it? In costumes and prayers. I ducked away from what pulled me. Do you know why I volunteered for cemetery duty all these years? Until the ankle. Just to touch it. That thing that people do when they put a mate into the ground that they saw day in and day out. And they look to some stranger with a, a solemn mug like this for an incantation. Even if he doesn't believe the words he's saying anymore. A ritual, a token, old custom. You know, Neanderthals bury tokens with their dead. We know that. Only they believed in their paradise. Okay, look, if you're gonna start talking about Neanderthals, I gotta cook. I mean, even their pets, they buried with flowers. Their pets? You're making that up. No, it's proven. Okay, Maggie, go cook. My confession's done. Yours too, right? Well, it was. Oh, no, no, stay there. There's one more thing. What else did you get your fingers on? The gilded candlestick holders, the censer. No, no, not that. It's about the dog. Nemo? What about him? Well, I wrapped his body up nice, like you said, and I, I took him outside. Into the back. You buried him like I told you. You didn't bury him. The ground was too hard. I, I put him in the garbage. You put Nemo in the garbage? I thought, what's it matter? What's it matter? I was already hanging by a thread here, you know. In reverse, we're going, Maggie. The Neanderthals would feel pity for us. Let them. Good. I'm done. I'm emptied. Do the prayer for me now while, I, while I'm still feeling ashamed of myself. <laughs> Do the prayer? Never mind pity. The Neanderthals would laugh at us. You know, because we're funny, you and I. I am not funny. You're funny. You know what? I've got one more thing to confess. What's that? I don't like you. I liked Father Gus a lot more. He took my confession quick, quick, and I, I felt good after, not worse. And he laughed once in a while. You? Never. And do you laugh? You know, the last time I saw you laugh was, was when I fell down the stairs. It was the first time in a year. Well, it was funny. <laughs> Until I saw the dog. You think I don't miss Father Gus, too? I mean, who do I have to play casino with after supper? You? You'd rather just sit there and crochet socks for yourself. Those socks to wear to bed. You're letting this place turn into an icebox. 
I can't pay the damn heating bill. Look, Maggie, I know you don't like me. I mean, for 35 years, we, we haven't really liked each other, but we both stay. That's the joke. I have to stay. If I left, you'd be dead of starvation in that room, and I'd be walking around feeling like a failure, even though it would serve you right. And I'm not gonna let my mother down, deceased though she is. Let her down how? She had this job before me. 11 priests she took care of, and the nuns. Never missed a day of work in 40 years, even with the arthritis in her hands. My God, that has got to go in my book. What was her name? Maggie, same as mine. See these hands, same. The details, the story is always in the little things that you miss. Let's go. The stew's gonna burn. Do me the blessing, forgive my sins. Now who gives me the right to forgive your sins? I'm just a guy wearing black. Oh, I give you the right. The old biddies who used to sit in the pews give you the right. Let's go, what's my penance? I'm your penance, and you're mine. I'll say a rosary. Are you happy now? It's overcooked. Good, more mortification of the flesh. Here, Maggie, sit still. By the command of our Lord in heaven, if you truly repent, all of your trivial, unselfish, unintentional sins, your droll, trite, inconsequential misjudgments. <laughs>